I think there's no doubt that ASEAN has been a, a huge success story over many years, uh, both in terms of the institution itself and also the countries it represents, as we've heard so uh, eloquently uh, this evening. I think its uh, encouragement of an uh, open export oriented uh, platform for growth and for poverty reduction is incredibly impressive uh, and certainly the market has welcomed that over many years. At Goldman Sachs, my group has tried to quantify a little bit just how important some of these pro-reform policies, uh, pro-market policies uh, have been in what we call our growth environment score. Now this is part of our perhaps now somewhat infamous BRICS and N11 research. BRICS of course stands for Brazil, Russia, India and China. Uh, N11, somewhat less imaginative title I'm afraid, is just the next 11 fast growing and important emerging markets. Uh, and that work of course has been uh, quite, um, quite important to, to Goldman Sachs in its own uh, operations but also uh, more generally for our clients because it's really uh, captured the shift that's going on in the global economy towards emerging markets and towards Asia in particular. Now these growth environment scores, what they're trying to do is just quantify a little bit the main drivers of long-term sustainable growth. And so the elements of this include macroeconomic stability and conditions, so things like investment rates, government deficits, inflation, and so on. It also looks at use of technology, uh, personal computing, phone lines, and so on. It looks at human capital, and it looks at the rule of law and other uh, political conditions. And I think it's very encouraging that the ASEAN countries come out right near the top of our list in this growth environment score. I've spent the last 25 years of my career in Asia in the insurance industry and we're a fairly good bellwether of what's going to happen in the region because we manage risk and we look at risk every day. ASEAN when it started was, was really a loose configuration of countries uh, linked by a concern about security but also having a geographies in common uh, and some vague common interests. I think a lot of us look back 40 years ago and were somewhat concerned that ASEAN will be perhaps little more than a dining club, but it's changed dramatically. I think significantly for ASEAN is, is the development of trade within the region, also particularly with its trading partners, China, Korea, Japan, who have made enormous contributions here. So I think the future of ASEAN is bright, and I think there's a, a good history that we can look back on and call ASEAN really a resounding success. But there are serious dangers in the world economy that ASEAN clearly needs to be aware of. And one of the things we see happening is what I call basically economic nationalism. AIG is a global company in 130 countries and we very much believe that open markets, free economies, the free passage of goods and services is what drives economic growth. That's not happening everywhere in the world. If you take the US as an example, where security concerns have started to override some business deals, and I can cite as an example the Chinese company Sinuk that was forced to call off its acquisition with Unicam. I can also cite Dubai Ports World, who had to abandon their plans of acquiring ports in the United States. I think it's undisputable that free trade drives the global economy. Studies routinely show that free trade is our best hope for rising living standards of the people across the ASEAN region. Free trade is good for business, it's good for the men and women of the countries of ASEAN, and it's good for the countries and the companies that operate here. 